hey, what a beautiful day to do some math. So what I'm going to show you today is how to build an equation for a circle. And the main things that you're going to need are the center and radius of the circle you're trying to build the equation for. And then you'll need these two equations. The first equation is if the center of the circle is at 0, 0, or the origin. And the second equation is going to be used if the center is some h comma k. So for instance, 2 comma 3 or 7 comma 15. And then we're going to look at using desmos.com to graph your circles to make sure that they're exactly the way that you'd like them to be. So here we go. So in our first example, we have a circle with a center of 0 comma 0. And then we want to figure out the radius. So I can see that the radius goes from the center of the circle out here to the outside edge. And I can measure that radius any different place that I would like. But the simplest way is to just measure directly along one of the axes, like directly along the x-axis here. We can see that the radius is 7. Now to build my circle, I would just need the equation x squared plus y squared equals radius squared, and I'm going to fill in the r with the number 7. So I have 7 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 7 squared, or x, x squared plus y squared equals 49. So there is the equation of our circle. And that means any x value and y value that are on the edge of this circle are going to have to work in this equation. If I put the value of x in here and the value of y in there, when I square those and sum it up, it's going to have to equal 49. All right, let's look at another example. In this example, the center of our circle is not at the origin. It's not at 0, 0. So we are going to have to use the other format for our equation, which was x minus h, in parentheses squared, plus y minus k, in parentheses squared, equals radius squared. So the center over here that we have is at negative 7, 1. So that's going to be our values of h and k in that order. h is the x value and k is the y value of our center point. And when we look at the radius of this small circle, we can see that the radius is just 1. So I need those two pieces of information, and now I can just put these in to my equation. So we're going to end up with x minus something squared plus y minus something squared equals our radius squared. And that's pretty simple, so I will just fill in the 1 squared over there. Now the reason I said something is because it's good to set up this format first and then fill in your value for h, which was negative 7, negative 7, and your value for k, which was 1, so we put in the 1. And the reason it's good to do it this way is that you can very often end up with a double negative. Notice right here, we have x minus negative 7. So we want to change that in our answer to x plus 7. Minus and negative is going to be the same as plus. So we have x plus 7 in parentheses squared plus y minus 1 in parentheses squared equals 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1 times 1. That's 1. So here is our answer. And you want to notice that when we had a center of negative 7, positive 1, we end up with x plus 7 and y minus 1. So it's like the signs on here are going to be switched when we go into the parentheses of our circle equation. Let's look at one last example. So again, we're going to find the center of our circle. So the center here is 0, comma, negative 9. And the radius, again, is going to just be 1. So now we want to fill in our equation. So again, I'm going to write 
my equation down, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And I'm going to fill these values in. So we'll get x minus 0 squared plus y minus, and notice we're putting in negative 9, so we have y minus negative 9 squared equals 1 squared, which of course is 1. For this part, we have y plus 9, similar to the last example, where minus and negative is plus. And over here at the beginning, the minus 0 is not helping our expression at all. It's not really doing anything at all. So we can just say that this is x squared. And here is the equation of our circle down here. Now let's hop over to Desmos and look at how this goes on a graphing calculator simulation. So I am going to show you on Desmos.com now how you can use this graphing calculator simulation and it can really help you deal with the equations of circles. So check this out. The first thing I'm going to do is actually title this graph. So I'm just going to call this circles and save this. And if you do that as well, you can end up with a nice circle calculating simulation for yourself. Make sure that you're logged in over here in the upper right corner, and that way you can save this for use later in your problem solving. So here is the idea. Some simple things using Desmos are that you can put equations into this editor very easily. So you just saw our equation for circles that have a center at the origin was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so imagine that I put in maybe 100. That would be 10 squared. Or if I put in 49, that would be 7 squared. Notice the radius is 7. If I put in 25, that has a radius of 5. But what's even better is I can just write in the general formula for a circle and put r squared. And notice what comes up underneath is it says, do you want to add a slider? And if I click on this r, it will add a slider for me. Now notice that the radius is currently 1. It's currently doing 1 squared to find that. But I can move this slider and increase the radius. If I set the radius to 4, then now notice the radius is 4. And this is graphing x squared plus y squared equals 16 because 16 is 4 squared. So this is a really nice way to be able to check your graph. Now, if I want to zoom out, I could do a radius that's much larger by clicking on the right end of this and saying, I want to go all the way up to 100. Maybe I want the radius to be able to go from 0 to 100. And if I set the step to 1, then it's only going to check integer values of the radius, like 5, 6, 7. It's not going to do the decimals. When you push Enter, that's going to give you a slider that will give you all of the different possible radius values that you might possibly need. Now another nice thing that you can do is you can just say calculate r squared for me right here by putting the expression r squared and right now with r set to 10 it'll say that it's 100. So if you need to find your perfect squares this is also a really nice, quick way to do so by using Desmos. When r is 25, notice r squared is 625. So this is a powerful tool for these circles that are having a center at the origin. But what's even better is if we do our formula for when the center is not at the origin, then check out what happens. We can say x minus h in parentheses squared plus y minus k in parentheses squared equals r squared. And we already have a slider for r, so it's going to ask us, do you want a slider for h and k? All of those. Yes, I do. And I'm just going to bring my r slider down here. So I have sliders for h, k, and r. And I'm going to turn off this red graph so that we don't see that one anymore. 
and I just want you to notice I can slide the value of h. I can change the x value of the center point. I can change the y value of the center point, and I can still change the radius. So if we zoom in here a little bit, you can see this in action very nicely. I can move left to right by changing the value of h that goes in right there in our equation, and I can change the value of k, which makes this go up and down. And I can still change the radius as well. So by using a simulation like this on Desmos, you can do a very good job of figuring out exactly what circle and exactly the equation of the circle that you're looking for. And if you want to see the center, you can just type in parentheses h comma k, and it will always show you where that center is. So as I change the k value, it's going to show me where that is. Always make sure that you save your Desmos files, and that way you'll be able to get to it anytime. So once you build a simulation for circles like this, you can always get back to it if you save this. Hopefully, that's going to really help everyone understand how to figure out the equation of circles and finding the center and radius of a circle.